Hi there, my name is Mark Lombardi, I hope you're doing well and welcome in this new video. Today I would like to show you how can you set up your own Kubernetes cluster with three nodes in order to run Airflow with the Kubernetes executor. You will be able to understand how Airflow works with Kubernetes and you will be able to make your tests. Since we are going to emulate a Kubernetes cluster, it will have some limitations, but that will be enough for development purposes. Alright, so if you want to follow the video, don't hesitate to click on the link in the description to download the materials of the video. Ok, so before getting started, there are three tools that you have to install on your computer. The first tool to install is Kind. Kind is a tool for running local Kubernetes clusters using Docker containers as nodes. It is primarily designed for testing Kubernetes itself, but you can use it for local development or continuous integration. Basically, that's the tool we are going to use in order to create a Kubernetes cluster with three nodes locally. The next tool is kubectl. Basically, this tool lets you control your Kubernetes clusters. So when you want to interact with your Kubernetes clusters, you will use kubectl. For example, if I want to know what resources are running in my Kubernetes cluster, I will use kubectl. Finally, the last tool to install is Helm. Helm helps you to manage Kubernetes applications. It is based on charts, and you can see a chart as multiple files, multiple YAML files actually, describing a deployment. So for example, if I want to install Airflow, just by running a simple command, I will get the Metastore, the web server, and the scheduler configured and running in my Kubernetes cluster. If you had the opportunity to install an application by yourself without using Helm, you know how it is painful to install things on Kubernetes. Once you have installed the different tools, we can move forward. Let me give you a quick reminder about the Kubernetes executor. The Kubernetes executor will create a new pod for every task instance. Unlike with the Celery executor, you don't need an external broker like RabbitMQ or persistent workers. Indeed, you won't need to have a machine running continuously even when there is no task to execute, wasting your resources and costing money as well. The Kubernetes executor allows you to auto-scale according to your workload and that's a huge advantage. Also, dealing with dependencies is easier as you will run Airflow in a Docker image, packaging both the dependencies and DAGs as we will see later in the video. Ok, so now let me show you how we create a Kubernetes cluster of three nodes. Basically, if you open the file kind-cluster.yml, you will get the description of the Kubernetes cluster we are going to spin up using kind. I won't go into details here, but if you take a look under the section nodes, you can see that three nodes are set up. The first one is the control plane, and the two others are the workers. Ok, so that being said, let's create the Kubernetes cluster. Type kind create cluster dash dash name, the name of the cluster you want, so let's say airflow dash cluster dash dash config and the configuration file describing the cluster which is kind dash cluster dot yml. Enter. Ok, as you can see kind is creating the cluster, so this process will take a few minutes to finish. Ok, it's done, let's check that the cluster is running. Type kind, get clusters. Ok, we got airflow-cluster and actually we can even execute this command to make sure the cluster is running properly. Ok, so the next step is to add the repository where Helm will fetch the chart corresponding to Airflow. To do this, we type helm repo add airflow https colon slash slash marklamberti.github.io slash airflow dash eks dash helm dash chart. If you are wondering why I'm using my GitHub repository, don't worry, it's just for the tutorial, but still, the chart is based on the official chart of Airflow. It is just to keep the tutorial valid, even if there is a change made on the official chart. Enter. Ok, the repository has been added. Let's update it. Helm repo update. And we can check that the repo exists. Perfect, and we can even take a look at the chart by typing helm search repo airflow. 
And as you can see, the name of the chart is airflow slash airflow with the version 1.0.0. Alright, so if you remember, a chart can be seen as multiple YAML files describing an application that you want to install in a Kubernetes cluster. In order to customize this chart or this application, we will use a file called values.yaml. This file provides default configuration data for the templates or the application in a structured format. So basically, if we type helm show values airflow slash airflow, which is the chart, and we redirect the output to a file called values.yml. We obtain a new file here, values, and if you open it, you will find the different parameters that you can change if you want to customize your Airflow installation. So for example, if we want to, I don't know, like change the executor used, you can set here the Kubernetes executor or a local executor or the sequential executor, whatever the executor you want. And if you want to, for example, set environment variables, you can do that here and so on. So basically values corresponds to the parameters you can modify in order to customize a Kubernetes application. Okay, now let's install Airflow using Helm in our Kubernetes cluster. So here we type helm install dash f values dash dash cube dash context and here we set the cluster name prefixed with kind. So kind dash airflow dash cluster. Then we type the name of the application we want to deploy, so airflow and the chart and the chart name which is airflow slash airflow. Enter. Okay, now let's wait a few minutes for the install to finish. Okay, perfect. We can see that airflow has been installed. Let's check that it is running in the Kubernetes cluster. So we type cube ctl get pods dash dash context kind dash airflow dash cluster. And we can see here that the Airflow metadatabase, the scheduler and the web server are running as expected. So at this point, you successfully installed Airflow with the Kubernetes executor in your Kubernetes cluster. Let's execute the following command in order to access the UI. Don't forget to add the context kind-airflow-cluster, enter. Okay, the port 8080 is forwarded, and if we type localhost colon 8080, we get the Airflow UI. To sign in, just type admin and admin. And we land on the DAX view. Perfect. Now, as you can see, there is no DAG, and so the next question is how can we add our DAGs in Airflow when using Kubernetes? One very simple way to deploy your DAGs when you are using Airflow with the Kubernetes executor is to package your DAGs in the Docker image of Airflow. To do this, you have to create a Docker file, as shown here. Define the official Airflow Docker image to be the base image of your Docker file so that you don't need to install Airflow with the dependencies and so on as it is already done from the base image. And then you have to copy the folder DAGs from your host containing the DAG parallel underscore DAG as shown here that we want to deploy. So the content of this folder will be copied into the folder DAGs of the Docker container running Airflow at the following path which is slash opt slash Airflow. You can find this path in the file values right there. Ok, so let's stop the port forwarding and build the docker image by typing docker build dash t airflow dash image colon 1.0.0 dot enter. Let's wait for the build to finish. And the instruction to copy the folder DAGs from our machine into the Docker image of Airflow has been executed as well. If we type Docker image ls, we obtain the Docker image we just built. Alright. If you take a look at the values.yml file, 
you can see that the chart expects a repository where to find the Airflow Docker image. The problem is, since we built our Docker image of Airflow locally, we don't have any repository yet. To fix this, we are going to create a local repository where we will push the Docker image. So let's do this. First, we have to delete the Kubernetes cluster we created at the beginning of the video by executing the command kind delete cluster dash dash name airflow dash cluster. Now the cluster is deleted, let's create our Kubernetes cluster with the script create dash cluster.sh. Okay, so what does this script? First, a local registry container is created running on port 5000. This is where the Docker images we build locally will be stored. Then, a Kubernetes cluster is created with the same command we executed earlier. Once the Kubernetes cluster is running, the script connects the local registry to the Kubernetes cluster so that they run in the same network. And then each node of the cluster gets an annotation to specify that we want to use that local registry. Now the Kubernetes cluster has been created along with the local registry. The next step is to push the Docker image we built into that local registry. So to do that, we first need to tag the image for local registry by typing docker tag airflow-image colon 1.0.0 localhost colon 5000 slash airflow dash image colon 1.0.0 Then to push the docker image, we execute the command docker push localhost colon 5000 slash airflow dash image colon 1.0.0 Enter. Perfect, the image has been pushed. By the way, you can check the local registry as well as the containers corresponding to your Kubernetes cluster by typing docker ps and you obtain the container of the registry as well as the containers corresponding to your three nodes. Okay, the final step is to modify the file values.yml in order to use the docker image of Airflow we built locally. So to do that, click on values.yml and right there, change the repository to registry colon 5000 slash airflow dash image. Be careful here, don't make the mistake to put localhost here as you have to refer to your local registry by using its container name which is registry as shown here. Otherwise, it won't work. Finally, change the airflow tag by the tag we set to the Docker image, which is 1.0.0. Save the file. Then in the terminal, type helm install dash f values.yml to apply the modification on the chart of airflow dash dash cube dash context kind dash airflow dash cluster airflow airflow slash airflow don't forget that here this corresponds to the name of the application when the chart will be installed in your kubernetes cluster and this corresponds to the name of the repository where the chart of airflow is hit enter Perfect, we obtained the same message as earlier telling us that Airflow is installed in the Kubernetes cluster. We can check that by typing kube ctl get pods dash dash context kind dash airflow dash cluster. And we see that the different pods composing Airflow, such as the scheduler, the web server, and the metastore, are running as expected. So again, if we use the following command with the context kind dash airflow dash cluster to access the airflow UI, 
then go back to the web browser and refresh the page. We obtain the DAG parallel underscore DAG as expected. All right, well done. At this point, you know how to build your own Kubernetes cluster locally along with the local registry and build your own Docker image of Airflow packaged with your DAGs. Let's run the DAG to verify that everything works. Okay, refresh the page. A DAG run is running. The tasks are queued. Let's refresh again. Well, it takes too much time actually. So let's go back to the terminal. We can check the pods corresponding to the tasks by typing kubectl get pods dash dash context kind dash airflow dash cluster. And yes, indeed, we have an error right there. This error is related to some parameters that you have to define in order to get the Kubernetes executor working in Airflow. So let's do that. In the file values.yml, find the parameter env, which is right there, and add the following environment variables. So the first one is name airflow underscore underscore kubernetes underscore underscore worker underscore container underscore repository and the value is registry colon 500 slash airflow dash image. Next, we define airflow underscore underscore Kubernetes underscore underscore worker underscore container underscore tag. And we set the value 1.0.0. So basically we are defining that the workers should use the same Docker image as set for the web server and the scheduler of Airflow. Then there are two other environment variables which are Airflow underscore underscore Kubernetes underscore underscore run underscore as underscore user with the value 50 and the last one airflow underscore underscore kubernetes underscore underscore dags in image with the value true. So save the file and let's upgrade Airflow by typing helm upgrade dash f values.tml dash dash cube dash context kind dash Airflow dash cluster Airflow Airflow slash Airflow. So by doing this, we are going to upgrade the current install of Airflow in our Kubernetes cluster. Let's rerun the port forwarding like that. Go back to your web browser, refresh the page, and the tasks have been successfully executed. If you trigger the DAG once again, okay. Let's refresh the page. The tasks are getting executed. Perfect, so everything works now and you have Airflow with the Kubernetes executor running on a Kubernetes cluster with three nodes locally. Enjoy your environment and if you want to learn more about Airflow and the Kubernetes executor, please check my courses in the description below. Have a good day, take care, bye bye.